Hi, I'm Paige Hutchinson, the Virginia State Coordinator for Project Learning Tree, and we're going to be exploring a special tree today. This is from Project Learning Tree's Activity 21, Adopt a Tree. Do you have anything special in your life, like a pet, or maybe a present you got, or even a person? How do you feel about that special someone or something? Well, we're hoping at the end of this activity that you're going to have a tree that feels very special to you. But first, you have to find the tree. So what I'd like you to do is to go out and find a special tree. So you could maybe, you might have a special tree in your yard, or maybe you see one over in your neighbor's yard that really looks and feels like it might be special to you. Or maybe you can take a walk in your neighborhood or to your local park and find a tree that really speaks to your heart and feels special. So when you do find a tree that feels special to you, you're going to explore it and observe it and learn a little bit more about it. And we're going to do that with my special tree behind me. So as you do this adopt a tree activity, you're going to actually create a, a journal about your tree. Now I've made a cover on the from the computer, but you probably want to be more creative than me and make your own cover. And I'm going to suggest some pages that you could put in your journal. You're certainly welcome to add anything to your journal that you want, but we're going to kind of explore some of the ideas that uh, Project Learning Tree has. So some things you may want to have on hand while you explore your special tree is a clipboard. So you can have just a regular bought in the store clipboard. But if you don't have one of these at home, you can simply make a clipboard from a piece of cardboard, put a paper clip or a binder clip on it, maybe a rubber band at the bottom to hold down your papers. Some other things you might want to have with you are a one hole punch, a pair of scissors, measuring tape, or even a, just a ruler, some crayons, a magnifying glass, a pencil, a permanent marker, and you don't have to have this on hand because you can find it online, a tree identification book. So a tree that is very special to me is this beautiful tree you see right here. It's the Eastern Red Bud. It's very, very common in Virginia. Um, and it's very noticeable this time of year because of its beautiful, beautiful pink and purple blossoms that come out in the spring. On the first page in your journal, you can list some things about your tree. So like its official name is the Eastern Red Bud, but you might wanna give your tree a nickname. So I've nicknamed my tree Bonnie. Bonnie is a Scottish word for beautiful. So you can probably find some interesting facts about your special tree and even identify the official name of it. If you use a tree identification guide, you might notice some identifying characteristics about the tree. Well, this time of year, it's the very bright, beautiful pink and purple blossoms. But when the leaves come out, I think an identifying characteristic of this tree is it's got heart-shaped leaves. And they're, they're, just, they're just lovely. So we'll check back on this tree in a couple weeks and see those beautiful leaves. Um, an interesting fact about this tree is that they used to use the bark of this tree to make medicine to help cure dysentery. Every tree has different kinds of bark, a different bark uh, pattern and it feels very different. So one thing you may want to do is make a bark rubbing of your tree. So on a page from your journal, you need a crayon and you just put it up against the tree and rub. Whoops, lost my crayon. But now I have a bark rubbing. But you also want to kind of feel the bark. How does the bark feel? Well, down here it feels very rough and ridgy and it feels like part of it's peeling off. But then I noticed farther up on the tree, the bark doesn't feel quite as rough. Uh, it's a little smoother. And I can see further up on the younger branches that it, it's even smoother. So the bark's not the same the whole way. Um, the older bark feels different than the younger bark. When your tree is fully leafed out, it would be nice to do a leaf rubbing. Right now, since I don't have any, I'm actually gonna use a plate that I have. And just to show you what a leaf rubbing looks like, you put the leaf underneath your paper, 
and take your crayon and rub the side of it like that. Make sure the veins are up so the, the leaf rubbing is actually a rubbing of the, the edge of the leaf and the veins. Another thing you might want to look for on your special tree is does it have any seeds or seed pods? A red bud tree has these kind of long flattened seed pods. They look like snow pea pods almost, except for of course these are dried out and browned now. And they hang in the trees in clumps. So one of the things you may want to do with your tree is actually do some measuring of the tree. Um, you could measure the circumference of the tree trunk. So the circumference is the distance around it. Now, if you don't have an, a tape measure on hand, a flexible tape measure, you can always use a piece of string or a piece of yarn and just wind this string around the trunk. And then this is what you need the marker for. Put a mark where the line is. So now you have a record of the circumference of your tree. Now one thing that's important if you're going to come back and check on your tree and see how much it's growing is to know how far up from the ground you measured the circumference. I measured mine at two feet. So when I come back say in the fall or later in the summer to check my tree, I will make sure to measure at two feet and I can compare it on my string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my string in a little envelope and I'm gonna keep it with my nature journal so that I have the same string for comparison. If you wanna actually measure and know in inches or centimeters what the distance of your circumference is, you can simply hold the string up against the measuring tape and find that information out. A question you might ask yourself is, is the tree healthy and how can you tell if it's healthy? So. This, health, this tree looks very healthy, the bark looks intact, it's growing well, there doesn't seem to be any dead branches on it, there doesn't seem to be any damage to the trunk and the branches, it's blooming nicely, new leaves are coming on, so I feel like my special tree is very healthy. One thing I wonder is if there might be any animals living in my tree. So I kind of looked around the branches, looking for nests, and I didn't see any nests in my tree. Um, not right now, anyhow. So I thought, well, maybe I'll look and see if there's some smaller animals that live here. So I got my magnifying glass, and I'm gonna look at the bark. Oh, there's a little ant right there. I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky and see some beetles and some other things. A very fun instrument that you can purchase, I got these online, it's called a pocket microscope. It was less than $15. It has a little LED light. It magnifies from 60 to 120. It does have a focus. So you take it to whatever object you wanna look at, you put it on the object, you focus, and it's amazing what you can see. So this isn't something you would have just around the house, but maybe it could be a special treat for you one day to get a little pocket microscope. How would you describe your special tree? You've touched it now, you've maybe smelled it. What does a tree smell like? I think this tree just kind of smells like the earth. Um, and you've looked at it, you've kind of examined it. So what words would you use to describe your tree? So as I was looking at my red bud, some words that I came up with are vibrant, colorful, strong, joyful. I, this tree just feels joyful to me. Growing, beautiful, interesting, and wonderful. So one thing you can do with your tree is make a sketch of the shape of it because every tree has a very unique shape, the way it holds its branches. So a page in your journal could be, you know, get your pencil and sketch the branches of your tree so that you kind of have a sense of the shape of your tree. Another thing you might want to put in your Adopt-A-Tree journal is a map showing the location of your tree. So if it's a tree in your yard, you may want to do a bird's eye view of your house and the yard and where in the yard the tree is. Same thing if it's in your neighbor's yard or if it's in your neighborhood and you're feeling really adventurous, you could draw a whole picture like of your street and show where exactly on the street your tree is. 
So I drew a map of the forestry building and the roads and where the tree is on the property to show where my favorite redbud tree is. So this eastern redbud tree is a deciduous tree, which means that it's going to lose its leaves in the winter. So it's, its leaves are going to look very different throughout the year. So one thing I do encourage you is to come out and observe your tree and interact with your tree in different seasons throughout the year. Can it maybe make this a year long project? So we're in the spring, you know what it looks like now. Maybe you can add a couple pages in your journal for what the tree looks like in the summer and then the fall and then the winter. Um, kind of track it and see what else changes. Not only just the leaves, does the bark change at all? Does what's living on or in the tree change? Um, anything else that you might observe different about your tree, you, you might want to add into your journal. If you're able to add pictures to your Adopt-A-Tree journal, remember to come out in the different seasons and get new pictures to add into the journal. And if you're an artist and you really like to draw, maybe you want to draw the pictures of your tree to add to your journal instead of taking them with the camera. So when you've finished all the pages of your Adopt-A-Tree journal and you'd like to put them together and bind them, there's a few options. I put cardstock in the back of mine just to give it a little firmness. And you can certainly use any paper, just this is regular copy paper. If you have line notebook paper, that's fine. If you have construction paper, whatever paper you have on hand. Uh, for this one, I simply just stapled it in three places along the edge. Um, for this one, I used this single hole punch that I had in the drawer and made three holes and then just tied some yarn that I had. You could certainly use string or twine, whatever you had on hand. But the most fun binding is this one where you just make two holes in the back, probably four or five inches apart. And then you find a stick outside that you really like and you need one of those kind of long fat rubber bands. So you thread the rubber band through the first hole and insert the stick, then thread the rubber band through the second hole and stretch it around over the stick and then you have a very unique fun binding for your adopted tree. So I hope you're able to find a special tree and spend some time with it, observe it, get to know it really well and make it your lifelong friend.